So let's start from the very last line. Um, and there are basically two choices of the pedal. You can uh, either hold the whole passage on one pedal and, and then lift it up only on the rest. Or uh, could be a better choice if you simply change the pedal on the last note as it's uh, written in the score. This way. And originally I made uh, the pedal exactly this way, but um, in my performance video I felt that I wanted to sustain this powerful tone of the whole passage and um, you know, sometimes I alter things <laughs> which I might learn um, before differently, so I hold the whole line on one pedal. But I think this is, this is um, generally a good choice. <laughs> example um, in this um, combination part uh, again if anyone is doubting uh, what to do with the pedal I would lift the pedal on the first beat and before the second beat I would press the pedal down just to open uh, the instrument Especially, it's very crucial here. One, and then again, I press the pedal first, and then on the open pedal, I play this B. So in this case, um, you know, you prepare your instrument to a round and full sound over here on this B. So basically, what I'm saying is press the pedal just a second before you start playing second beat on these bars. Um, let's take a look at the first page. Um, what I'm going to say here is very simple and most probably you, you, you've done it already, but uh, for some of you it might be something new, so I'll just go ahead and tell you. So when you change the pedal, everywhere basically in this piece, don't change it uh, on the melody, change it on the first note in your accompaniment. So, here, and then you change here. And you change over here. And you change over here. And you change only here. Because if you play it other way, um, something is missing. Uh, so you can see with the red um, pedal, I basically wrote um, the parts where you need just to pay more attention where exactly you hold the pedal. Again, you change only here. Uh, so, etc. And uh, the same on the second page. you play on and which hole, which acoustic, again, depends on your taste, but basically the first two lines of this wind, you know, you can either uh, hold the pedal through the first two lines entirely or change it uh, in the beginning of new line. more frequently you change your pedal. Uh, mm, so that's kind of the rule of this part. And this is where every crotch is.
stitch here and here of course. So um, that's about it about pedal. Now um, let me tell a couple of things about um, very interesting moments that if you highlight it will definitely benefit your playing and everyone will be like oh wow that was really cool. So as you can see in this uh, couple of examples I uh, I wanted to highlight the left hand and the best way to do it through the music of speech. Uh, not necessarily you need to play it louder, but if you intonate with music of speech, uh, then um, it will be more prominent, you know, naturally. And again, um, if you want to uh, make some exercises to, to know what I'm talking about, the link is in the description below. Uh, so the first one from the very end of the piece. Um, while playing it, I actually realized that it reminded me the opening uh, of the left hand from the allergy by of mine. I hope I pronounced it correctly. Allergy, right? Um, because I think there's some similarity. Also, this fifth and sixth. of pain and then you're going down faster 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 <laughs> um, and then the second example from uh, the middle part it's up to you actually how you're gonna use your pedal but the point is when you feel this octave Expressiveness so much. So I find it important. And actually, um, it's not uh, showing on the screen, but I can recall another one over here when you play it. You know, your left hand, if you could also sense fifth, sixth, and triton here so much so much pain so if you feel it and also here octave seven and triton so just um just try to make it in this part and um it will be very nice i think and uh since we're talking about expressiveness let me also uh, let's just talk about harmonies a little bit and again if you are you know, not familiar with harmonies how to feel them and everything the link will be in the description below but um, there are a couple of places where I think you really should feel the harmonies uh, because this is kind of combination part over here <laughs> meaning as you can um, so start it with harmonies <laughs> so if you listen to this you will see C sharp minor and then it goes to uh, basically A major crucial I don't think that everyone can actually understand and feel it well minor yes but then this major how powerful it is and also when you play after this passage this B flat on the top uh, it's also helpful to understand mm, in which harmony you want to actually color this note I talk about this all the time if you have you know a naked <laughs> Or melody, 
Uh, you also want to know in which color this melody is still. So this B flat, I personally imagine still in this diminished chord. So this is how I perceive it. And then I feel this. And then pay attention. This is the culminative, I would say, interval of the whole culminative step, you know, and harmony of the whole piece. used to imagine the notes in the color of these harmonies and then you intonate I promise you it's gonna be so unforgettable <laughs> for the audience and for yourself as well um, and another harmony example maybe uh, I just want to share with you because it was beautiful for me you know you're in this um, G minor it's a little bit sad but you can say it's a sunny weather here, right? And then you go here. when I put it here and I play it soften then uh, by softening at the end of the bar I let the whole harmony really shine we're going after this 